What's up guys, welcome back to the next episode of Sled Talk. Uh, If you're tuning in on iTunes or Spotify on a podcast there or Amazon Music or perhaps maybe you are on YouTube watching this and if you are, then you will notice that there is a new face on this next episode. This is episode six. Um, So sitting across from me is a good friend and good writing buddy, Kobe Doherty. And uh, so Kobe is here to do another interview, another interview, interview. You got it. Yeah, interview. <laughs> um, so Kobe, let's just jump right into it and give the viewers and the listeners um, a little bit of backstory of who you are. Right. So let's dive right into who are you? How old are you? Where are you from? Any of that personal stuff that you want to give the audience, you know, a little bit of backstory about you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I guess uh, we're just going to start off with I'm Kobe Doherty um, from Hepner. I'm 21. And uh, I'm a farmer, rancher. We do wheat, cattle, hay, and uh, lately I've just taken on a new new career, and mm-hmm. I moved out to South Dakota, and I'm going to become an ag pilot, a spray ag pilot. And for the viewers that don't know what that is, um, a lot of the crops nowadays, they get applied by ground rigs and tractors. Well, I'm going to try to do that at 190 miles an hour, five feet off the ground with an airplane. So. <laughs> adrenaline's kind of my middle name it it really is and uh hepner it's a little small town we got 1500 people it's it was an old logging town actually is what it it originated as and we've we've been lucky because we are 30 minutes from some pretty sweet riding it's not the best place in oregon but it's it's 30 minutes man so you cannot beat that and snowmobiling farming and aviation it's been in my blood since day one and uh i'm really excited because this year i'm going to be able to wrap all three into one and it's going to be a heck of a year heck yeah dude i'm super excited you know i've so for the people that don't know i've been texting you off and on for the last it's like been, three four it's months been so hard to get linked up with this guy. <laughs> i feel bad because i've <laughs> literally been 30 hours away across the u.s dude it's it's all good you're you're here now so super excited about that and yeah talking with you you know obviously getting you on here and then everything else that you're doing within life i'm super excited for everything that you have going on um and yeah you couldn't have said it better like what's to come this next year is going to be incredible for you it, it really is fronts. it really is um so yeah when how old were you the first time that you Threw your legs around the sled. Well, when I threw my legs or when my mom <laughs> threw her leg when I was with her. <laughs> yeah. e- either one. I don't know. My dad still tells me today I was conceived from a snowmobile trip. And I may have been <laughs> an accident, but I'm sure it was a great snowmobile trip. And I'm sure it's a good story. <laughs> well, probably. <laughs> but uh, the first time I, I uh, threw my leg over a sled is I think I was probably in a, I was in a kid pouch with one of my parents. And uh, all I can really remember is, is when I used to ride as a little kid, I couldn't make it. I could never make it. I was so young and I was so tired. So I'd always fall asleep with my goggles right on the mountain bar. And my <laughs> goggles would bounce and the old man would just balance me in between his arms. So I started there and then uh, I actually got my first sled. That was a 550 Indy black with some purple and blue splatter paint down the side. And I had to ride triple with my two sisters. Oh my God. So we were riding triple on about a 135 track is all it was. So you can imagine how fun that was. And all I could remember is every time I would just, I'd bug my dad. I'd bug anybody. Hey, let me ride your sled. Sure. Let me get on there. And they're like, dude, this kid's like, five years old there's no way he can and i just drag race right across the prairie and 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 it was just ever since then i've i've loved it yeah i've loved it so where where are some of the places that you have ridden well without without giving up any of the you know good riding spots state wise i have uh, been to washington oregon idaho montana and I'm yet to touch Wyoming or Utah, but I think that needs to be in the mix real soon. Yeah. But yeah. basically Oregon. Oregon is probably my favorite place to ride. You know, Montana has crazy riding, and so does Idaho, but it's it's my home state, man. We got to rep Oregon. Let's go. <laughs> Dude, 100% <laughs> I agree with you. Um, yeah, speaking of Montana, we went – wasn't that – the trip that we went, wasn't that your first time? Absolutely. To Montana? Yes, that to was. right over there? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, so that was, uh, I think Tom mentioned it 
previously on his episode that was two seasons ago now i know i can't believe that we need to get back there well because last season the snow was like we were talking to to brady and and danny and those guys over there and the snow was just not it never got to them like nothing was coming out of the north everything was coming out of the you know west off of our side we were getting those coast storms and everything i know the cascades were getting hammered last year if you could get it when it was good it was good, but then it'd warm up and it'd be in ice in about three days. Yeah. Well, we even tried to get them to come over here, but I don't think they were down with that. <laughs> I've, I've got them talked into it this year. They're going to, so? yep, yep. I've talked to Brady and Danny about it, and they're like, we, we have to get out to Oregon. We really want to. So I'm thinking a halfway trip, boys. Oh, I'm my thinking a gosh. halfway trip is going to be real big this year. Heck yeah, that'll be sick. Or, or Idaho. Or Idaho, you know. Meet in the middle. Yep, absolutely. McCall. McCall, man, I love that place. They got good bars. You can ask you can ask some <laughs> buddies a of mine. Great, it's a, I, I hear that the local McCall bars are a great place to sell sleds and sweatshirts. <laughs> oh my huh? goodness. The weirdest thing about that is we did not know those guys were millionaires until after the fact. Props to Cody Hoffbauer. He's already been on here, but we, we, we hop into this bar and we've got bars deep. This guy's logo on our sweatshirts. And, and I love the sweatshirt. I wear it every time I ride. And we're in this bar, and these two boys come up to us. And <laughs> the one asked me, he goes, what's it going to take to buy that sweatshirt off you? And I, like, it kind of like popped to me because I was like, wait, what? This guy wants to buy like my clothes? <laughs> I was like, are you homeless? And I was like, what's wrong with this dude? And, ne- you know, push come to shove. We were all playing pool together. And I ended up selling mine for, I think it was like 50 to 60 bucks or something. We settled about $60. Little do I know when I walked out, Cody comes up to me and he's like, dude, I just sold my sweatshirt for $200 to the other guy. And I'm like, what? No way. He's like, yeah, dude, you just had to jack your price up. We go back to the same bar that next night and the bartender goes, hey, do you guys realize who you were talking to last night? And I was like, I never even caught their name. And she goes, those are the two richest millionaires that live in McCall. Oh, my gosh. And they were just ordinary guys. You would have had no clue, would have never known. They were just in jeans and, you know, tennis shoes just like we were. But they were dumbfounded with the Bars Deep and Sledson logo, and they loved it. They were like, that's the best sweatshirt we've ever seen. Oh, nice. Well, good. So Uh, I think we got to do a little bit. we got to do a little bit more merchandise selling around the road, man. People love it. People love it. So a couple of things are coming. Um, I just placed several orders for more of the Bars Deep sweatshirts. Um, in a couple of different sizes and then also new this year, um, is with my ambassador program with climb. Yeah. I just ordered a large amount of just their regular black climb sweatshirts. Heck yeah. Um, so those are, you know, everything's on back order or whatever, but so those are coming in, uh, January. And so what we're going to do is take those climb sweatshirts and then we're going to put the, the skull sleds in logo on the other side. That'll we're look screen sweet. print that. Um, those are are going to be a little bit more pricey than than the Bars Deep sweatshirts, Dude, but <laughs> people will pay for it. <laughs> hey man, clearly people will pay for it. They well, don't care. Yeah, one hundred percent. So, um, so yeah, and then obviously we've got the beanies and and some koozies and a couple of different things that Absolutely. are that are coming. But um, yeah, we're going to push those pretty hard. I this love year. the koozies. That's a huge thing for snowmobiling. By the way, you always got to keep your refreshments cold. Yeah, one hundred percent. The iced teas, right? <laughs> yes, iced teas only in water. Um, so yeah. Anyways, we kind of just went down a whole whole road right there. But yeah, so trying trying to plan another trip, possibly to Montana this season, um, with all the boys. I know Cody it's going to really be a road show this there. year, man. It's going to be a road show. It's going to be a lot of hours on the road. Yeah. Well, I want to get some new places for sure. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of I mean one hundred percent the idea too right and a little bit of backstory too like you know i've been in conversation about kind of you know the goal or the vision here with the podcast and that's to to be able to go to you know new areas or areas maybe we've been to in the past or you've been to whatever um and hook up with a couple of local riders in those areas go ride with them for the day and then in the evening get everybody on the podcast absolutely we're Um, going mobile baby and and interview them well i mean you see viewers can't see but you see all the crates right it's there gonna, yeah it's gonna those be a lot of work all, those are all four we just got all those so that we can put the mics and the stands and the all the gear the board everything in all of those crates so that we can throw Absolutely. them in the truck and rip good thing is is i'm hoping i'll have an enclosed trailer wherever we're headed so 
We got to post up in the trailer. It's going to be warm, dude. I'm not getting cold. One hundred percent. So yeah, got um, got a couple trips planned for sure. We will definitely keep listeners and viewers um, up to speed with where we're going, what we're doing. Obviously via social media platforms. Um, and then so yeah, so let's actually get into um, you know you you talked about your very first sled, right? So I'm sure there was a couple after that, but There's let's been get a into. Couple. If you want to talk about those, you can. If not, let's get into what you're currently on right now. Well, you know, you never, you, you can't get to what we're on without what I've rode in before. So I've, Take I've, me through I've had that 550 Andy. That was a sweetheart. I uh, moved up to a wrecked. It got totaled off the back <laughs> of a trailer. It was a 600. Luckily, my old man's an ex-Polaris mechanic. They used to own the Polaris shop now in uh, Lexington. Grand Grower's Polaris. If you guys are looking for a new sled, it's tough to try to get one right now, but Grand Growers and uh, Grand Growers Polaris in Lexington, Oregon, yeah. hit hit, hit Justin Bailey, Mr. Up. Justin Bailey. Yes, yeah, sir. I, I think he hooked that. you up, didn't you? Yep. I bought uh, all three sleds absolutely um, from him, and uh, I was actually thinking about shooting him a text to see if he wanted to come on here. Yeah, yeah. Podcast. He, I, I guarantee you, we could get him on here. Totally, we could definitely get him on here. But uh, from my six, it was a six hundred Dragon, is what it was, and me and my dad rebuilt it completely, so custom. You know, you and uh, I, I throttled that thing out for as long as I could. And then I, <laughs> I sold it. I don't know who got that, but I, I hope it's still good sled. Yeah. Went and I uh, got my mom's 700 Dragon, moved up to the 700. I was really getting some horsepower there. How old? When you got that, you remember? Shoot. I don't even know. I'm, I'm going to say it was probably around like the 10 year, 10 year old mark is where i got the 700 gotcha it was okay. it was yeah it was not because the dragons you know they were all oh oh nine oh ten oh eight and i think it was an oh eight or oh nine 700 it was the last 700 ever made and so i moved into that one great sled and then uh when the game really changed for me is when the players players came out with the pro and i think i'm not the only one to agree when players finally came out with the pro the mountain riding it escalated everybody thought you know we hit it we <laughs> hit it large man <laughs> and so i got an assault 800 pro 155 and that was awesome my first ride i went to halfway four feet of powder the first time i ever got on it it was horrible i i was stuck the whole time <laughs> but you know we got to progress that's the only yeah. way you ever get better is if you try things that you're uncomfortable with yep. so i rode that sled it was great i loved it but uh like everything else it's it's time to you know update every now and then and uh I had a buddy, he had a sled completely built up, wrapped, uh, had SLP, stage four, heads, pipe, can, clutching, everything you could do to it without a turbo, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, I rode that sled for 400 miles and it blew up instantly. <sighs> good old, oh, a good no. old Polaris, good old Polaris. You know, they had a little mm -hmm. troubles with their early axes, as I will admit that. They've had troubles with their motors a lot. Yeah. But uh, the early axis, it blew up on me. Uh, Polaris warranty, <laughs> but boom, came in handy. They put a crate motor right back in that thing, and we were back at it, but I never strapped the heads back on that thing. Yeah. It was just too much torque. It sure. was too much. It'd stand on its tail, but uh, that was a huge sled. That was that was probably my game-changer sled right there. That's, yes. when I, that's when I knew, like, I, I, I want to get serious. I want to do some crazy things on these yeah. things because the ability of them, you could just point those sleds uphill and they'll go. It's crazy. It's whether or not you can hang on or you have the cojones. It comes to, down to you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Sled's capable. comes down to you. Yep. Yep. And right. so I rode that for two years and uh, I was lucky enough. The players started giving out gold cards for snow check and it was $1,000 off. I talked my old man. I'm like, hey, how about I get that $1,000 off? And he let me have it. And we snow checked an 18 18 uh, axis is what it was 155 blue blue sled uh, i'm sure we'll see it in some videos yeah. that I, I don't know if some have seen it i've rode it the last five years it's been an awesome sled yeah. and uh i slp pipe and can that one and two years in i made <laughs> i made the biggest move that i will never go back on on a sled oh boy and i bought a boondocker yeah uh -huh. boondocker turbo out of a guy in Michigan because elevation's so low down there. So he's like, hey, yeah, I'm going to put this on my sled. Well, it didn't work. It was going to blow his sled up. He was, he was throwing detent codes and whatnot. Yeah. And it was it's for altitude compensation. That's what the turbo's name is pretty much. Yeah. And uh, I picked that turbo up for three grand out of Michigan. It got oh, shipped here. Very nice. And I had Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I'm, I'm balling on a budget, man, always. Yeah. And so I got that from him, and we strapped that on that sled. And I will say I will never ride another sled without a turbo. No? I, I have no problem riding other sled, but I will have a turbo at yeah. all times. Yeah. It's killer. It's the biggest 
mod and game changer in my opinion. It really is. I know, you know, Chris Brandt and all those guys are going for the lightweight stuff, but I'm like, if you got that track spinning fast <laughs> enough, man, there ain't much going to stop it. Yeah. Look, I mean, look at Yamaha. That's yeah. what they do. They yeah. just get as much horsepower as they can and point it uphill. They don't, they don't care about the weight. Yeah. They're driving boat anchors out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. 100%. But uh, I actually, I was in McCall, and I have a little uh, little riding buddy with me. He's from he's from my hometown here in Stanfield. And unfortunately, we were about 300 yards from the uh, trail, and me and him were doing some hill climbing and some bombing, you know, around. I was kind of showing him the ropes and whatnot, mm -hmm. and some things happen. And uh, next thing I know, I've got a ghost riding sled coming at me at about 60 miles an hour, and it punches mm -hmm. me absolutely directly in my tunnel, and it bends that Polaris right in half. Yep. Popped my uh, heat exchanger. I had antifreeze blowing everywhere. Couldn't get it home. Had to tow it out. And uh, that was the end of that. That yep. was the end of that sled story. Yep. And so then I was stuck without a sled. I went right down to Justin Bailey there at Grain Growers. I'm like, hey, man, this is what I got. This is what I have to spin. What do you have? And players had just came out with a new chaos. And I'm like, I'd really like to get into a chaos. But I honestly, I didn't want to get into the 850 motor because they were still having a little troubles with it at that time. Yep. Sure. And so he hooked me up, 800 Chaos, me and the old man, we went and picked it up, built, we put it all together ourselves, took it home, swapped the turbos on it, and I think, it, I don't know if I wrapped it the first year or the second year, I think I wrapped it second year, I wrote it a yeah. little, I wrote it a little bit with stock graphics, and then I wrapped yeah. it, and uh, that is still the old trusty steed that I'm on today, just because Polaris is having a little trouble this year with uh, getting their sleds out. <laughs> yeah, like, not a lot, like a lot, like a lot of trouble. Yeah, I think every everything in the world yeah. is having troubles, but yeah. this is Polaris's kind of first downfall since the 900s, I think. But you know, that's COVID. COVID did it to us, man. Yeah, dude. We're all we're all recovering. Yeah. So other than the turbo on in the wrap, what else? Don't you have some Ice Age? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, nobody, Polaris came out this year with the, the slash tunnel, which is pretty much a factory cut and raised tunnel. They took the heat exchanger out of it now. So if you do happen to snap your tunnel, you can still get home. You know, mm. they're just trying to update things. Um, I think ski -Doo, they did the slash tunnel a little bit before Polaris. Mm. But if you look at everybody, everybody's cutting their tunnel. Oh, yeah. You know, Chris Brandt, the big riders, everybody's cutting their tunnel. It's, it's a huge game changer, and I totally understand. Mm. And so my idea was is well is mainly my dad as being a mechanic and meticulous as his he goes there's no way you're taking a saw to your tunnel man there's no way that thing's perfectly fine yeah. <laughs> and so i'm like okay well i'm just going to do a 155 tunnel and put a 163 ice age rail underneath of it and yeah. one it looks very good mm -hmm. and two it gives me another three or four inches of clearance in the back you know and yeah. and it's not that fun on the on the short snow days i really am a 155 fan and i didn't want to go to the 163 yeah. but like last year when we were in McCall with seven feet of snow, I wish I had a 174, man. That 163 was not enough. Yeah. But it's a it's a killer. It, that that tunnel cut, that is one of the biggest mods. I love that. Um, they put the new Raptor shocks on it. I truly believe that shocks are one of the biggest things. I hop on your sled, and it is a dream. Yeah. It's like floating Fox. on a boat, yeah. man. <laughs> it yeah. is nice. Yeah. Yeah, well, and tunnel cuts too. Yeah, I took. Uh, I said this on a previous episode, but I took my my sled over to uh, Nick, over in Bozeman, who yep. actually he used to work for Ice Age, um, and he rides with Kasturki and a bunch of boys over there. Um, and yeah, he he cut it uh, seven inches, and then put that uh, the skins aftermarket that's cuts the sides of the tunnels yep, a little bit yeah, too. Yeah, that's what I'd love um, to do. And. Obviously, you know, like I, I tried to do a couple of bow ties and some hopovers and failed there and halfway a couple of times. But um, and, you know, we've only been out twice and the snow is not good enough to really try too much yet. Um, but I was just telling these boys earlier that, you know, it's T. Smith's year to do some bow ties. Absolutely. You know, we're going to do some tomorrow. This company we're and doing this bow podcast tomorrow. and all this stuff and not be able to do that. <laughs> so, I mean, for me, like a little bit of backstory, too. Like I, um, you know, I would definitely say that. You know, last year, the last two years was really, like, the first time that I, you know, have been able to go ride with other people, um, you know, because Caden, my cousin, he just kind of got into, into he's on a snow bike, but he's kind of gotten into the snow space, and, uh, you know, which then introduced me to everybody else here that's been on the podcast and stuff, and then you as well, um, and something particularly, you know, out of out of all of you, not to throw any shade to any of the other guys, but I do believe, I think they would agree with me as well, that you're probably out of our circle, you're probably the, the most skilled rider 
um, <laughs> in our group, I believe. And so I'm really excited to, you know, I'm sure you and I are going to have a lot of one-on-one time out riding to just pick an area and just sit there and work on yeah. bow ties, hop overs and stuff over and over and over and over, run the reps until, you know, more practice. Absolutely, man. Um, and so something for me personally that I'm just really looking forward to, um, to work on this year and to work directly with you on those things because it's, it's a lot of fun watching you ride it's a lot of fun watching tom and cody and everybody ride um you know and, and i think it, and i've said this before like I, th- I think it's really important to put yourself in a place number one you said it perfectly dude like do shit that makes you uncomfortable that's how Absolutely. you become better right and so with that is putting yourself in situations to ride with other individuals that are on a higher level than you that have more experience more seat time um and all that kind of stuff. And honestly, that's, that's the biggest thing, right? That like you bring all those other boys, Tom, Cody, yourself, everybody. Um, it's not, I mean, you guys definitely, there's different skill sets and stuff there, but at the end of the day, the biggest thing that you guys have on me is seat time. Yeah. You, guys, you know, just have way the, more time. The one on thing that I, I do but. love though, is when people ride with me is I tell them first thing I, and I have, I have skilled friends and I am, I ain't the best rider out there. Right. Absolutely not. Not even close. And my thing is, is I don't, I don't try to put it into good riders, bad riders. You know, I mean, uh, there's always going to be the opinions and yes, there's some that are a little bit less fortunate (laughs) than the others. But in my opinion, man, it's riders. It's riders. We have guys on snow bikes. We have guys on short tracks. We have guys on long tracks. We have women, we have kids. And that's, that's what it is to me. You know, there's a lot of guys that can go out there and they want to chanted up about how big they can jump off of stuff, you know, and I, I don't mind messing around with my buddies about a couple of things, sure. but a rider to me is a rider. As long as you're on that snowmobile, I'm loving it yeah. and I'm loving it. I just want people to be there. Yeah. And if I can get friends like you guys to try to follow me on some of the stupid stuff that I try to do, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Cause it's not only making me better cause you guys are pushing me. Cause when, as soon as Tom or one of you guys come park right up next to me, Oh man, <laughs> I got, I gotta go. I gotta get to work, man. Yeah. They caught up. I, yeah. They caught up. We yeah. gotta go. Yeah. And that, that's, that's what it is. It, that's what it is to me, man. It's snowmobiling. It's, it's not about who's the best or who's not. It's, I just love being up there with my friends yeah. and having you guys and new friends and me, like meeting you two years ago, mm. two years ago, I hardly had any riding friends. You know, yeah. I had a, I had like maybe two guys yeah. and now we've got a whole we got a whole team, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a and whole it's only squad grow from here too. Well, dude, it's funny because literally my first interaction with you, the day I met you, you like jumped in my truck and we drove to Montana. <laughs> and how many uh, hours like, was that? Oh my god! Uh, to well, to Missoula it's six, and then so to Ovando seven. Man, we were ramp. Obnoxious. Yeah, there and back. Yeah, I was like, who the fuck is this kid? We were obnoxious. <laughs> I just remember saying at the end of that, I was just like, dude. Thank you for putting up with all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember. Yeah, I, I remember. No, Those were some childish that. days. But we grew up in two years. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, some of us. Well, yeah. <laughs> I try to think of that. I have. You know, there's a couple of sure. There, we got. We still got some kids with us. That's yeah. for sure. Like I said, yeah. we got riders, kids, yeah. to big kids. Yeah. We're all we're all kids, man. Totally. We're all just out here playing. Well, and, and uh, that leads me to another point too of like just riders, right? And so that's part of the reason for me regardless of what level anyone's at, including myself, that was part of the reason why I started the sled send retreats, right? And so we've got five guys coming up the first week in February that are coming up from Austin, Texas and Phoenix, Arizona. Never been on a sled before. Man. Ever. But that's part of the reason why I, why I created that was because I want to share that feeling that you just spent the last 30 minutes talking about with other people. Absolutely. Right? And what better way than to do it from somebody that's, you know, some of these, some of these guys that are coming, they've been in some snow and I think one of them has been on a sled. He's like from New Hampshire. Um, but the other ones, you know, they've been like snowboarding and stuff, but they're about to step into an area where ah. they have no idea what's about to happen. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and so like literally explaining like, this is the break, this is the kill switch, all that kind of stuff from the ground up. And I love that. Right. And so for me to be able to share that passion and, you know, to be able to teach and, and lead for, you know, in the ability that I'm capable of, um, to whatever that is, like I it's, that's what it boils down to is just the ability to share that and expand that experience of what it means to be a writer. Absolutely. Dude. It's a feeling. Me. It's a feeling. I love how Tom, Tom Kitty said it best. You know, it's there's, he has friends that snowboard ski and so do I, and I love snowboarding and skiing. That's Same. a great I, sport, yeah. but I, you know, I've been in snow cats. You can do, you can race dirt bikes. You can get all that adrenaline, but until you're on a snowmobile 
floating on like something that feels like a cloud. Dude, I just got chills. <laughs> yeah, it, dude, I, that's what coming over here. Yeah. I had chills the whole time. Yeah. I still got chills. We're about to go ride tomorrow. Yeah. I, I, it's like a football game. I get the butterflies, the yeah. tinglys, the whole thing. And it's, it's a feeling that is literally undescribable. And I still, I asked my old man today that is 60 years old and he's been riding since he was a kid. I'm just like, what, what, like, what do you think about it? And he's just like, there's not a thing in this world that is better than snowmobiling. There really isn't. He goes, that's why I pour all my money into it. And I have all my friends that do it. He goes, it's just a feeling, man. Unless you do it, you will never know. Right. 100%. Just get out there and do it. I mean, dude, like that's, and I've said this on, on previous episodes and stuff too, but you know, and I'll say, I'll say this with you. Um, like that's, that's how I feel about it. Right. Like I grew up in Montana and I, you know, my whole entire Smith family, everybody hunts and all the outdoors and all that kind of stuff. And I part, I partook in all of that and loved it and for what it was and respect it. And, uh, you know, I don't do any of it anymore. Um, I've just stepped away from pretty much everything. Like the only thing I do in my life, as far as like for fun, for hobbies is I like to travel and I snowmobile and that's it. Yep. Right. Like I, the, the previous episode, it was just me and I was talking about my whole backstory and stuff. So if you want to know more, go back to that previous episode, but so I won't go into it here, but, um, you know, I just don't, I don't want to do anything else. Right. And so like summer and stuff, like I hate summer. It's, it's hot downtime, stuff. man. It's just um, like, oh, man. you know, and, and so during that I'm traveling and just, and just focused on all the businesses. Right. And just working and, um, stacking cash. For Absolutely. Because That's that is about. another thing about snowmobiling is that it, it is one of the most expensive <laughs> oh my <laughs> things. Gosh. Um, but at the same time, like that's all I do as far as like a hobby. Right. So I'm not putting money into, you know, the next best rifle and the next best bow and all that kind of stuff and all the gear that goes involved with it. whatever your hobbies are. Like it's just snowmobiling for me. Um, we got one thing, man. Yeah. We got one shot, dude. <laughs> It, it, that that's really what it is, you know, and I, I do feel really bad for some of the younger kids trying to get into it because it's really tough, man. As a, like a 20-year-old and 21-year-old, I'm super lucky my dad's into it, and I'm super lucky he's a mechanic because I got a lot of friends, you know, and they try to get into it, and there's certain rides where you break something, and it's like, man, there goes the fun right down the drain, but it's you, you just got to put that fun behind you, you know. Tom, Tom Mavitt is one of the best guys that I've seen put the fun behind him. He really does. You know, unfortunately enough for him, he tends to break things more than anyone that I have ever seen on a sled. Yeah. But he can break things, and I will give him more guff <laughs> than anyone. I promise you that because yeah. he does ride a kitty cat <laughs> for the viewers out there. Tom is on a kitty cat, mm -hmm. and his spirits are always up. He's, he's got 100%. like, he's, he's got 30 players riders behind him just dogging on him, man, about why do you do this? Why do you do that? Yeah. That kid can turn around and have the biggest, goofiest looking smile on his face and still mm. have the best time, whether he's sitting on a trail or he's towing a Polaris out from time to time. Yep. Which he's had to do. That before. he has. And he's had to tow me out. That's, uh, that's 100%. Yeah. yeah. Which is, so which is just half of riding a rocket, man. They're going to yeah. break sooner or later. <laughs> <laughs> that's facts. 100%. Um, yeah. And so this, this is actually what I should have opened up, um, the podcast with something that's super exciting for me is that out of all the previous episodes, I'm finally not the only Polaris guy. Dude, You're the first, that's I was a little Polaris alarmed guys. there. I was wondering why we had so many kitty cats uh, on here. Dude, it's because it's you were in fault. South Dakota I hey, I leaving traveled, me hanging. I traveled 45, 45 hours to get here. 45 hours across the U S and you know now we're here and now we can now we can talk about the real sleds we can talk about the, the sleds that get to the top <laughs> it's so it's so funny because i had um this guy sent me a dm on instagram uh, a video uh dm and he was like hey man love what you guys are doing with the podcast it's so awesome it's so great to see you know i know everybody likes to tease about different brands and stuff but you guys are like super down to earth and and really open about all the different brands and whatnot it was really cool to see that and i and i responded back to him i was like all right cool thanks i appreciate your support like um and yeah like we're just some dudes that are just talking about a snowmobiling but i didn't tell him that that was all about to change because kobe was coming on the podcast tonight <laughs> so it's polaris all the way baby <laughs> it, it really is but you know what it honestly boils down to for me and i've i've told I've told Tom, I've told Cody that ride Arctic Cats. It's it's the convenience because we can come back from a, a trip where Tom has something wrecked. He's got to have his dad on the phone instantly with the nearest cat dealership that's 
how close? Not very close. And usually parts they got to either drive over an hour to get, have them shipped to them. If I break something, we're in ties with Polaris, and I'm I'm ten minutes, and I'm 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 ten minutes to the store, yeah. and they are sitting there with my part on the counter with it already built, everything, boom, yeah. right there, mm-hmm. and and right back home, which and, makes and a big difference for getting back on the snow. And, and that's the Hopefully. hugest thing, you know, is all the parts, the availability, they sell them right there. It's our hometown. I have nothing against Articat. Articat, mm-hmm. they honestly, they have great sleds. That they've had a, they've had bad years, but so has Polaris. Polaris has had horrible years. Yep. You know, Skidoo's. I've hopped on Skidoo's. They rip. But just for me personally, it, we look at the big picture. You know, it's not all mountain riding. Skidoo's are pretty set up for mountain riding. Articats, they're set up to share your passion, I guess. <laughs> but. <laughs> I'm not sure what Articats are, what they were going with that monorail. They're trying to be like a snow bike or something. And I think that's a little bit of a fluke, but hey, Articat has a gotta, double rail. I think it's cool, though, that they're like pushing boundaries. And they are. Trying to they advance are. And they're they're, come try, up with they're trying to come out with new things. And it, it is you, the, the whole industry. It's a dog eat dog. And if, yeah. you know, if you're not pushing new things, people, the people aren't going to get, people aren't going to buy your dog type yeah. of deal. 100%. And, but I, I've hopped on the Alpha. I've hopped on twin rails on Tom sled and. Mm-hmm. You're not going to go wrong. It's like with yeah. new pickups, man. Everybody's going to have their preference, but every one of them is going to drive good and every one of them is going to rip. Except for a Dodge. Well, <laughs> I, 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 got a buddy, to... I got a buddy with a Dodge here in town. It's the fastest pickup I've ever seen, so we got to be easy on that. <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, as you see, I just picked up my phone, and yeah, I just yeah. got a text message from a buddy who was riding today where we're headed tomorrow. Where? Let me see. And he says... Hit that place that we're going today. 12 inches of powder, um, fresh. A little bit of crust up high, but not too bad. Nobody there today. Only saw a couple sleds. No grooming, so a little hopped up on the trail. But Bow ties. We're zipping down the trail <laughs> to get back. I think, honestly, um, just because we haven't been there yet, I think we're going to go back into where you, me, and Jeff went back yeah. there past Bone um, and get into some... Get us some deep get into and some, deep. Yeah. Hit them north slopes. Yes. That's that's exactly what I was thinking. So you know, we we, we could have traveled somewhere else, but just with a couple of things with the sleds we got, testing them out. I love yeah. going to like, you know, Tollgate, Hepner, those kind of smaller mm-hmm. places because if something does happen, yeah. you don't want to be out in halfway three hours no. away or somewhere like that where no. something's gonna go wrong. So this it'll be perfect. It'll be the perfect sled or perfect snow, not sled. Yeah. But it'll be the perfect setup. Yeah. I mean, because if they got another 12, 18 inches with, you know, the snow that we even got here in Hermison, because we went last Saturday, and there was about four feet back there. So if they got another 12, 18 on top of that, um, should be decent. I'm just hoping the stumps are covered up. I'm a I mean, stump there's, magnet, man. Right? Oh, <sighs> no, that's not good. <laughs> so I somebody was also at uh, Catherine on um, Sunday. Mm. And they saw somebody driving out on one ski. <laughs> so, no good there. But well, we're gonna um, have to be careful. You but yeah, buy, we'll, you can't buy a arms right now. So be oh, careful, boys. No. I only have one stock left one because I hit a rock with the right one last <laughs> season. So anybody, well, I, I think I'm just gonna hold on to it in case it, I bust mine. But it, it's tough to find parts. That's what I uh, I follow uh, Core Freshies that that fell yeah. out of Core Lane, and that's a who's his, coming on the podcast soon. All right, all right, we'll, we'll get him on tonight we'll get if him you on. want. Oh man. That Zoom call. Zoom call. Zoom he's call. Uh, he's with uh, Scott right now. Um, they're uh, they were building their website because he sells merch and stuff too. Yeah, yeah. They just um, came up with a bunch of stuff. I yeah. So that. he's he's putting the website together and then he's helping Scott replace the track. Um, so he said anytime um, if we wanted to set that Zoom up, um, we can wrap this up right now and try to get a hold of him if you want. Heck, man. Um, it, whatever's but, up to you. Um. Anyways, what were you gonna say about him? I'm sorry. He uh no he just he he posted online uh. He had to go clear to Spokane, Washington, to find parts for Polaris, mm-hmm. and it was—I think it was a Ben A arm, is what it was. And that's what I'm like super terrified because I have a like tendency. It's not necessarily <laughs> hitting stumps, but it's just sometimes when you're up in the trees, I've, I've checked trees so hard sometimes trying to, I guess, bounce off of them or ski mark. I don't know what I was trying, mm-hmm. but Polaris A arms are meant to bend, not break, and they bend very easily. Yeah. And with this whole deal going on, parts—I'm a little scared, scared this season, man. I'm—I'm I'm pretty scared. Yeah. Well, I don't you can't even, get anything if you can't get it, then you're out. Yeah. Well, and I don't even know what, like, some of that. I'm assuming that some of the aftermarket companies are probably faced with the same thing. Right? Sold out. Everything's yeah. sold out. Yeah. I, I've tried Chris Brandt's website, Dan Adams' Next Level Shop. 
everything's out. Yeah. We, uh, I had to go on to next level just to order a couple things for the new matrixes that showed up. Yep. And we ordered six parts, six of what we ordered just because I knew that you wouldn't be able to get them a week later. I have all six of those sold <laughs> and I have more guys asking me, did you buy any more? I'm like, no, go check it out. Sold <laughs> out. Lord. Sold out. What part was it? It uh, new rail system for the matrix. The matrix don't have those T slots, which all oh, the on top axes, of the, tunnel is, the for pros, the bags and stuff. They all have the built in yeah, yeah. T slot, and mm-hmm. the matrix doesn't have that because they took out the heat exchanger and weight reduction, uh, yeah. name of the game. Yeah, yeah. And so now those tunnels are very, very. They're just thin yeah. as a wire. But and there's there's this new bag system. Well, if you look at like my dad, he's still got bags from the nineties that he's using, you know, because they used to build things way better and, and stronger back then. Well, if you don't have the T slot, it ain't going to go on there. Yep. So they, uh, Dan Adams, I think next level riding clinic, they came out with the new T slot, uh, bracket is, I guess is what you'd call them. Sure. And a bunch of guys ordered the matrix slash. And I'm like, they're going to want to put their bags. And when we go on certain rides over by Anthony, it's a hundred mile an hour, or it's a hundred mile long trip. Yep. And that is no joke. Yeah. 100 mile long mountain trip. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You have to have a two and a half or you won't make it back. That yeah. That's true. I, I'm pretty sure I've had Tom and, and Caden. I don't know if they went, but you, they did go. They did go. I, I thought they went, and I think both of them ran out of gas. Is Are you referring to the time that Tom went and he totaled a brand new Alpha? Is it that time? Ooh. Was it that time? God, he ran out of gas and he snapped and everything. <laughs> we had like three trees staffed to that kitty cat trying to get him out of there. I, well, we're like going to have to make a montage. I have like three videos of Tom where he is just getting towed out on sleds. Oh. So we're going to have to make that a TikTok. That's great. <laughs> That's perfect. Um, so let's yeah. talk about one last thing and then, then we'll wrap this episode up and then go into another one. Um, you just recently got to ride one of those Matrix. Yes. Correct? Yes, I talk did. Talk about that. Yes, I did. So I, uh, it's a matrix slash, not the boost, but it was a 155. And uh, be completely honest, for trail wise, and all we got to do was spin some cookies and some meadows and stuff and jump. It didn't, it's not too much. It's not too much difference. Where you're gonna see the huge game changer of this sled, it's that tunnel. They really that that back weight tunnel these things are going to come over backwards like no other because you have no weight back there you have no drag there's no mud flap it's a raised bumper i mean these things you're going to be able to pull them over backwards and just keep going and that's you know that's a huge thing for it instead of getting stuck upside down you're just going to be able to go right on out but i wrote it the power's the same it's an 850 motor that patriot motor is a great motor players finally has got some things figured out with that one Mm -hmm. and they they ran with it they or maybe it wasn't on the matrix matrix maybe it was for the axis they just had a recall in the 2022s for the crankshaft yeah they They had they had a couple of the early ones and you know players has just had they've had heck man they really have with the factories they've shut down some factories i know that and it's with COVID. it's not their choice but It's just how things have went. But, uh, yeah, a couple of the earlier ones, they had a couple recalls. Just It's like with anything. You'll get mm-hmm. recalls on pickups, sleds, right. four-wheelers, and whatnot. But uh, these ones that uh, you won't you won't get your sled without the recall done with it. The dealership, they did that before it will ever get to you. So gotcha. the ones that we rode, they got straight off of the train, and they went straight to the hills. And I'm being – they rip, man. Yeah. And I'm really excited to see them performing the trees versus the axis because the axis is – unbelievable in my opinion you know yeah. we get Articat guys hop on it we got skidoo guys hop on it and everybody will admit that is one of the sweetest sleds right it's like walking on a it's like walking on a ledge on a side hill they mm-hmm. just hold their line yeah. and i'm really stoked to see what uh the slash is going to do but i i think it's the game is bow ties you know it's <laughs> bow ties and hop overs and if you can have that less drag and keep keep digging that snow that's where you're gonna it's where you're gonna see it the most yeah cool awesome well i'm glad that you got to Get on one it was pretty There's cool. I, had, that are I just, just uh, I just those. seen my first Matrix Boost, mm. and I checked out that new uh, what do they call that? It's like a vertical turbo. I think I haven't done oh, too yeah. much looking into it. Like yeah. I said, I'm still on the old side kill, side kicker Boondocker yeah. turbos. And Polaris this year came out with a new turbo, and it is instead of being you know upright parallel to the rest of your stuff, it is right. now a vertical turbo. Yeah. And I looked at it, and it's it's wicked. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's weird looking, and huh. uh, 
the new screens players got, it, that's going to be a mean sled. Yeah. It's going to be a really mean sled, and uh, there'll be some – I'm going to be on one this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, yeah, one, yeah. I got one coming in the trailer, so <laughs> it'll be all go. red, not my colors, but yeah. we'll be on it. I'm oh, going to do a lot of comparing. Cool. I want to see how it does sure. versus Boondockers Turbo type yeah, yeah. of deal. Yeah, totally, 100%. Let's, uh, let's wrap up episode six. Kobe, I cannot thank you enough for coming on and Thanks sharing. for having me, man. Totally, 100%. I – um. Long time coming. That's yeah, sure. dude. It's it's been a minute, <laughs> but we're here. We got the first one done with you. Yes, so we did. um so yeah, let's wrap that up at episode six. Again, appreciate you coming on and look forward to all the future ones. You guys are gonna see Kobe's face often, whether you like it or not. Um, I'm so, prettiest. so yeah. definitely, you know, if you guys are listening to this on podcast platforms, um, I cannot ask you enough. Please leave a review, download. Um, that helps us a ton. If you are watching this on you know, on YouTube, please consider subscribing to the channel. Turn on notifications. New episode every single Friday morning at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And, uh, yeah, we'll leave it with that. Last thing, um, I think we're going to start at the end of these podcasts doing, um, you know, a, a, a sled talk question. Okay. And okay. so, Kobe, what is something that you want to ask um, the listeners and and the viewers shoot well i would say um what i want to know is is i'm like i said earlier on the on the show i'm a baller i'm a baller on a budget so and i and i know sledding's expensive and so are mods um i really want to know from the viewers what what do you guys think that the best mod could be for a sled regardless of the brand that they ride i i want to know my opinion I'm I'm a horsepower guy, so I think the turbo is the biggest mod for me. But I want to know what you guys think is the best mod. So please comment and let us know because it might be something that I haven't heard about yet, and it could be a game changer. I feel like all mods are. So let's let's hear from the viewers. What's what's the best mod you guys can do for a sled for yourself? That would be my question. Perfect. <laughs> Leave your answer below, guys. Appreciate it. You guys tuning in. Absolutely. Hit that like button. Honey K on the protect, leap, living life with no regrets. I can't design her when I get dressed. Hey. Hey. Summertime on winter fresh. Fresh. I put her legs behind her head. Oof. Night night she gone to bed. Bye bye. Every day it's a new test. Uh. I just keep chasing these chicks. Uh. Living life with no